Okay, so let's go back to uh, here, and we'll go on to miscellaneous forms. Okay, so lots of stuff going on in this page, um, or it might look like there's a lot of stuff going on in this page, but there's not much. So let's start up here with attached files. So you can click attached files, and this will allow you to attach any sort of files that you want to attach. Options being an RMA, the uh, worksheet that you have, the uh, paper chart if you want to put that on there, any type of photos that you might be taking if, if there's a motor vehicle accident or something like that, or other patient documents like the patient's record or medication list or something like that. Um, you could put it into here. You would just select it, um, choose file, and then upload it, um, you know, a scanned image or a, a picture that you've taken on your phone, something like that. So let's go back to Miss Forms. Um, if you want to print something out, you can do that as well. If you want to add an addendum to your chart, which is really only necessary if you've already locked it. Um, and we're going to hold off on complete and locked because we aren't quite ready to do that yet. We can go over here to other miscellaneous forms on the left, and we have lots of different options here. So the state um, has an export function that you can put in there. Um, and this is all of the data validation issues. So what this is saying is that these are items that you have not completed. These are items that you need to complete um, before you can lock it, before you can export to the state. So let's hold off. Well, no, let's not hold off. Let's actually fix these. So um, the purple ones at the bottom are just recommended, but the red ones at the top are required. So if you go ahead and we'll click on one, so this tells us that we have lots of issues on page one, dispatch information. So let's go back to destination grid click on that. This automatically loads page one on uh, our chart here. So um, on the map, think what? Oh, okay. So uh, on the back end, I'm going to have to add these fields because they aren't being presented here. But uh, what you should see is uh, in this spot here a little field that says scene grid or destination grid uh, I'm sorry a scene grid here which just uh, selects what municipality the town is in uh, what municipality the receiving facility is in um, you'll see these pop up they're very straightforward so I guess I can't fix those right now um, same thing vehicle grid would pop up in the uh, dispatch location general and that's just saying where was the vehicle when the call went out where were they responding from so if the you know ambulance was in Hampton and you were dispatched for a call, you would select Vehicle Grid Hampton, um, which would help um, attest to why it might have been just a couple more minutes for the response time. But I'll have to go back and fix those. So um, the videos you've watched don't have these fields, but they will be there, and they're very straightforward. So it also wants patient condition on page two, which. Uh, Looks like it's also a field that we did not activate. So um, it'll be another uh, field up here. It'll just say patient condition. Um, it'll be very straightforward. Um, so that's my bad. But for any required fields that you don't have filled out, um, it'll warn you when you go to do this. Great. My bad, my bad. So let's go back to uh, the activity log. Oh, not the activity log, missed form, my bad. So I also have a supplies used option. So on our call sheet, on the left-hand side above the narrative, there's a little box that says what supplies you used. Well, 
EMS charts has a pretty nifty service here where you can actually put down what the quantity of the supplies were. And if, you know, say for instance, we used um, a non breather on the patient, but then we restocked it at the hospital, you select that. Um, what EMS charts lets us do is for whoever's managing the equipment, the squad, um, they will get a report as to what supplies have been used so they can take the numbers of supplies that exist at the building and figure out when we need to reorder items just based on you know people inputting the uh, supplies that are used here same thing with medications on the AED pads um, you can even put in paper towels or toilet paper at the building if you think we need some more so very useful and it requires you to enter this every time so let's say we didn't use anything just so it doesn't mess, mess our count up and we'll say that Alright, so activity audit, another form that we need to require, or that is required rather. Quickly fill any of these out. Um, they're all defaulted as no. Most of the time it should be no. Follow-up letter. So what we're going to be doing, or at least on a trial basis, is sending out surveys to patients um, and uh, having a little blurb about getting a donation from them. Um, you're required to fill this out, but we're not necessarily going to be sending a follow-up letter to every single patient. And you, as the crew, actually are going to be the ones determining whether or not this patient is probably someone who should get a donation letter or not. So, um, all that you need to do is either hit accept if you think that the patient does need a follow-up letter. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So, what you will select first is a uh, survey letter and delivery method will automatically put follow-up letter Q and that will go into whoever's looking at this on the QA side um, and they'll print out a letter and send it to them. So you can either hit accept or letter not required if you think that this is someone who is not going to either A, fill out a survey or B, provide us with a donation. But if it's not a frequent flyer and it's someone who's you know private residence that you're going to, probably a likely candidate for a donation. So all you need to do is hit survey letter and then accept or letter not required if you don't think that this is someone who we should be getting a letter to. So let's say letter not required for this patient. Enter reason. Um, unlikely donor. And uh, the only outstanding one is the state export one that we can't finish because I need to fix those fields. Um, but at this point, the chart should be otherwise ready to go. So what you need to do is sign the chart. And this is where that um, pin came in. So you put your EMS chart's password in. And whatever pin you selected. save your signature. Um, if you put in the wrong information, it will tell you that it doesn't match. So you just re-enter it and just whatever the problem is. But once it does go in, you can save it. It'll be saved. You can view any signatures on. Is it call already? All right, test, test side it. Um, and you could attempt to complete or lock the chart. But you can't do this now because it's telling you that there's a required form that's missing which is the state export. Um, if there is anything else in the chart that needed to be fixed, um, it would tell you what needed to be fixed, allow you to fix it before you can complete the chart. So that's uh, pretty much it. That's the EMS chart in a nutshell. Uh, go through this a couple times, create as many test charts as you'd like. Um, if you have any questions, we'll be having in-person trainings um, in a couple weeks at the end of the month. And uh, you can bring anything in there. We'll sit down. We'll go through some test charts. Or if you see me in the meantime, we can just sit down and go through test charts whenever you'd like. Um, create as many test charts as you'd like. Don't worry about it. You can't actually complete them and submit them. Um, we haven't turned that switch on yet. But uh, prepare yourselves for August 1st. Take care.